This is the entrance to the interpretive trail to the right of the mounds at Lake Jackson Mounds. First along the trail you pass this little lake or pond. It's actually a burrow pit believed to uh, be where the material was dug up to build the Indian mounds. As you go down the trail there's some hardwoods and some nice big pine trees but then you get into some low areas. There's a, a little boardwalk causeway that goes over the creek. But this used to be the plantation of Colonel Robert Butler. So a lot of these uh, trees are second growth trees, even though it's been over a hundred years. I didn't go on that boardwalk. I'll actually be coming back that way. I took a right and I'm going down the path. I'm going to see the area where it used to be the grist mill owned by Robert Butler. And coming up on the trail, I can hear the water rumbling. And you can see the uh, disturbed bank of the creek bed. Now, these trees have actually fallen down since the last time I've been at the park, which not too long ago. There's been a lot of flooding and high water. So those, those trees have actually fallen down over the creek. But you see these uh, timbers right here inside the creek bed. Well, you kind of wonder how logs get buried in there. I believe that's uh, part of the grist mill that Colonel Robert Butler had. See one of the logs is flat here, almost as it's, if it's been carved. You know, normally you don't have trees like in, in the middle of the bank embankment like that. So I'm kind of thinking maybe those were put there on purpose and this might be the uh, remains of Robert Butler's grist mill that was here. It's a very scenic. It's another tree that's fell down. The banks are eroding really bad. And there's been a lot of rain this season, which has uh, probably contributed to it. cross over that bridge. The uh, path gets a little difficult here. I mean, I don't recommend it for anybody in wheelchairs and with mobility issues. And you know, I have enough problems on my own climbing it. <laughs> and there's a ravine right there. And now the uh, path walks on an area it looks like an embankment but this is actually the earthworks made by uh, Robert Butler as part of his grist mill operation trying to uh, control the water because it's elevated like a causeway and it's nice and straight here's another bridge well seepage creek that comes out of the hillside up there where you where all the ferns are and goes down here and runs into the creek we just saw okay continuing on the earthworks now uh colonel robert butler was raised by andrew jackson and so he was ward of jackson his father died so jackson got the court to uh, legally turn Butler over as his wards. And so he grew up in the first Seminole War. Butler was adjutant general of Andrew Jackson, came into Florida. And he eventually moved here to Florida, became the surveyor general, the first surveyor general of the state of Florida. Had a grist mill and 
plantation right here on Lake Jackson, which is probably where Lake Jackson gets its name. Well, it's uh, late May, and the green is really coming out on the pathway. But you really have to stay on the path because I see there's a lot of poison ivy in the area. Leaves of three. I see some down there. Well, it's probably hard for you to tell on the video. Here's some nice poison ivy there. And here's some more right here. It's all over the place, so please stay on the path when you're here on the uh, interpretive trail as I continue walking on uh, Colonel Butler's earthworks. Now I think there's a sign that says they're earthworks, but the park really doesn't have any information about Butler in the brochures or on the signs or anything like that. That's all the research that I've done. Robert Butler is the one who was responsible for saying the uh, prime meridian marker which is now in Cascades Park near the capital downtown and of course he arrived too late and so the job was done by his uh, subordinate and there's always a lot of controversy surrounding surveying in Florida and so uh, Butler was always under this cloud of a political controversy, but from that prime meridian uh, marker in Tallahassee, all the surveys in the state of Florida were made off that marker. Now the trail splits. There's a bench, and a lot of people tend to go this way. I'm not going that way this time, but it actually connects with the back road and. The uh, State Park archives are hidden back there. There's a warehouse. It's like the Indiana Jones warehouse of the state parks. But we'll not go there. We'll just go down here across the wooden bridge. And the wooden causeway where the uh, stream goes over. Okay, I just came off the causeway and looped back around, back on the trail. Got to tell some people about Robert Butler. So this is an interpretive trail, but you got some interpretation from me, which you won't find on any of the signs in the park or the brochure. Robert Butler was a, you know, somewhat important person in the history of Florida. And so it's kind of my job to educate you folks and find out about the history and you can't visit the uh, mounds here without visiting the uh, big mound and the picnic pavilion they have an archaeological display which is pretty good and there's a little fruit bridge that goes over the creek we just saw in, in the woods that had the grist mill and it runs into Lake Jackson of course and grass and plants are really growing over it but it's a and the walls eroding away on this side but it's a nice creek yeah, let's go up the uh, Temple Mound here. And yeah. it's a nice wooden ramp and a big, broad, uh, steep staircase going up the mound. And so you don't get to hear me huffing and <laughs> puffing, climbing the stairways. Then I'll meet you up at the top. Okay, we're up on top of the mound. There's a nice big pecan tree, there's a hickory tree, there's a oak tree down there, nut-bearing trees which make food for the 
animals and pecans and hickory, certain for the people that were here. But I don't think these trees were grown on the mound when the village was active. And through the woods there is White Jackson, also known as Okehipki, which means disappearing waters in Muscogee language, which I've actually heard some oral history about this place. Looking down on the open area. And there's another mound that you can climb on top of that has a staircase going up from the parking area through those trees back there. But this is always a peaceful, beautiful place. And I enjoy visiting up here. And so, as Lake Jackson Mounds, also known as Okehipki,